Uh, all right, so this was supposed to be a lightning talk, so I'm just going to kind of fake my way through chatting about whatever's uh, whatever's on my mind and whatever's interesting. So first off, who knows what, Apa uh, what Apache Solar is? Okay, so a decent number of people. Uh, basically, it's just uh, a search engine, an alternate search engine you can use to uh, index and search uh, content. So, you know, a lot of you might be familiar with the out-of-box search that Drupal provides that, you know, will basically extract keywords, do basic analysis of your content, and you can search against that database. Uh, Solar runs on a completely separate ap application server, on a, a Java application server, uh, creates its own index, and uh, you can search against that. Um, it's great, it's fast, it's really scalable, uh, works a lot better than Drupal's out-of-box, gives you a lot more flexibility. Um, I'm not going to really get into how to install or configure Apache Solar. That's something we could do in a, in a later talk if people are interested. Um, I just kind of want to talk about a little bit about what it is, show kind of some of the capabilities and some of the uh, maybe first level extensions you'd want to, you know, extended applications that you'd want to use Solar for. Um, so I'm going to use this site, Handbago, that I've been working on for about a year now uh, and just kind of show some of the stuff I've done with Solar on this site. Uh, and try and give you at least indicators where to start looking for uh, kind of how to how to apply these concepts to your sites. Uh, this is a Drupal 6 site, um, and uh, a lot of the concepts still apply in Drupal 7. Uh, there's been a lot of improvements for how Apache Solar is integrated into cell, or how you leverage Apache Solar in Drupal 7. I'm not going to get into that stuff. If you have questions, uh, we can talk about that afterwards. So anyway, so Solar. At its at its core, uh, gives you site search capabilities. So, um, I've got it hooked up for my site search. I also have a couple custom uh, search pages that sort of pre-filter the content that's rendered. Um, so, you know, do a basic text-based search. And basically, what's great about Solar is instead of hitting your MySQL database, it maintains its own data store, runs all of its queries against that. Um, and what's, what's sexy even beyond that is it's not just returning results from there, it's re returning results and to end their associated data. So basically you can preload uh, as much content as you want to into the solar document that gets indexed um, and then return that so that in, in generating this page uh, that I'm showing here, all of this stuff is pulling straight from solar. It, it hasn't touched the Drupal database at all, um, which is pretty badass. Um, so a lot of pages that you might generate with uh, views and sort of view, exposed views filters, you can do with Solar in a much more efficient way. Um, and, you know, you can sort of drill down into things. Uh, all this stuff is basically just out-of-box Solar. Um, let's see. So, anyway, this is basic Solar. Um, now, what you see along the side here, uh, I will point with my mouse once I clear this out, um, these sort of filters that you can drill down in, uh, you notice that they've got, you know, a value, uh, they've got a count displaying the number of nodes that are, uh, you know, returned for that given value. Um, all of this stuff is, these are, uh, these are called facets in Solar. It's just a, a nomenclature thing. It basically just means a predefined filter uh, Solar is automatically indexing and sort of optimized to return contents that are segmented along these uh, these groupings. Um, so when you uh, when you index your content, it's saying, okay, great, I'm going to take everything that's Python, or everything that's patent, or whatever. Um, it's going to optimize its search so that you can quickly retrieve things based on that uh, that parameter. Um, out of box, uh, the Apache Solar module that is implemented in Drupal will automatically create these facets for you for every CCK field uh, for basically all of the uh, the relevant Drupal fields such as content type, uh, author, date, those kinds of things. That's all created out of box for you and it's literally a couple of keystrokes to enable that facet and then enable a block for it and uh, you can toss it onto your site. Um, what's cool though is that you can really easily create these custom, create custom facets um, for your content. Uh, for example, one reason uh, you might want to do that 
in this site, so I've got a number of different content types that are returned by my site-wide search. I've got blogs, I've got bags, I've got designers, all sorts of different stuff. Um, for a number of different reasons, I've you know there, there's a there's a a field that is common to all of them, which would be the the designer or brand. Uh, but for a number of different reasons, I've got that stored in different places in each of the content types. I'm, we're not using taxonomy for various reasons, um, but that field is stored in a, literally in a different location in each node. So I can't just say, oh, there's one CCK field that's designer. Great, build a filter based on that. So what I needed to do in order to be able to provide this uh, designer facet to be able to filter my content on is create a custom field and a custom facet that then Solar can then uh, index on. Uh, so I'm going to take you through kind of the, the quick and dirty approach of how to do that. Uh, are, is everyone kind of following so far? I know I'm going, to, going kind of fast. You should mention about what uh, CCK field types are allowed in Solar, because I know there's a limitation in that first. Uh, I think it's text field and only using certain widgets as well, at least out of the box. Have you run across that? Uh, I have not run across that, because um, uh, the, solar, the solar schema is set up out of box to support basically single multi-level integer fields, uh, number fields, floats, kind of kind of a lot of stuff. I think the only place you might run into a little trouble is like node references. Uh, and this is uh, this designer is actually an example of node references that, um, that I'm using. Um, so there's a number of hooks uh, that you need to leverage uh, to sort of say, hey solar, I've got a, uh, I've got a facet. Um, actually we'll take one, one step back from that. Uh, let's see. So when, uh, when Solar indexes your content, you have the option to manipulate what gets tossed into the index, including adding additional fields. Uh, there's this hook Apache Solar Update Index. Uh, and basically what that says is as Solar is indexing your node, uh, whether when you're initially loading all your content or if a node gets updated, then Solar will, then the Apache Solar module says, hey, this has been modified since the last time I looked at it. Let me look at it, update the, uh, the Solar index with any changes. Uh, you know, say you change the title of your node or whatever. Um, but you have this hook that gives you access to that object before it gets passed to Solar to do its magic. Um, pretty awesome because it means that you can manipulate any data that's going into it, including adding additional fields. Uh, so here I've got this, you know, basic logic. I'm, I'm actually doing quite a bit of stuff. Uh, yeah, it's just documented node. Um, and the document is basically a, uh, it's an Apache Solar object uh, that's defined by the Apache Solar module. Um, there's really only a few functions that you use to interact with it, which is like add field, um, let's see, yeah, add field, set field, um, you can set boosts. Um, again, boost is sort of like adjusting the um, search waiting for a given field. So if I match on a title field, I can say, hey, you know, let's make title field really important in returning search results versus any other field. <sighs> okay, so uh, this update index, I've got a little basic logic that's saying, okay, great, uh, let's switch based on node type. And like I said, I've got this designer field that lives in a bunch of different node types, but it's called something different. It's referenced differently. Um, so in my handbag field, uh, let's see where I've got that. Designer. So in my handbag field, the designer is called field brand. Uh, in my designer node, it's actually just the node itself. Uh, in the blog, it's called the field news designer. Again, some of this stuff happened before I got associated with the site, so uh, I probably would have done it a little bit differently. But anyway, so basically all I'm doing is I'm saying uh, I've got this value for designer that's going to be common or I'm basically extracting out from each specific node type where the relevant data is, and I'm putting in one variable. Uh, and then when I get to the end of this logic, I say, okay, great. If there's a designer defined for this particular node that I'm indexing as I'm stepping through, I'm going to add my own field uh, to this document that then Solar is then going to index um, called IS Designer. Now, Solar, when you're designating field names, uh, it's got this little prefix that I've got highlighted, uh, this IS. Uh, in this case, it stands for integer uh, single value. Um, you know, the one above it, you see SS, which is string single value. There's prefixes for sort of all the 
uh, data types that you'd expect and all the uh, cardinalities that you would expect, so single or multiple. Um, but basically all I'm doing here is I'm saying to this document object before it goes to solar I want to add the value of what is in this field um, to the specific uh, field in solar, so IS designer. Does that make sense? Um, uh, I'm sorry, I'm adding, well, I'm adding this field to this document, and then Solar takes that document, does its magic to it, and puts it in its data store, and then it's available for searching. Um, so what's great is you can kind of overload your own custom, custom stuff that sort of is beyond the scope of CCK, um, or beyond the scope of sort of the built-in node field. So if you have some business logic that you want to do uh, any kind of transformations or whatever, um, you can sort of add them to your solar index programmatically here. Are you, are you creating the field within the document and then populating it here? Or are you, what are you doing exactly? It looks like document add field SS item or IS designer. So I'm adding the field IS designer and then dollar sign designer. Is that the value that I'm putting in there? Correct. That is the value that you're putting in. And you're looping through this? Yes. Well, this, this happens for each node as it's getting touched by the uh, the index utility. So it says, okay, great, this is a designer node. Where is the value for that designer field? Great, put it here, store it into the document, and then pass that off to Solar for indexing, and then Solar will do its own processing. Um, so this this ha this whole callback literally happens on every node uh, that gets passed into the Solar index. Make sense? Okay. Um, so, that's great. I've added a field to Solar, but now it's not available as a facet to me. I have to say, hey, Solar, not only is this a field, it's a facet that I'm going to want you to do your special uh, manipulation to to make to optimize the index for what, so when I search for something uh, along, you know, based on designer, you'll be able to retrieve it quickly and and you know give me those uh, give me all those great counts of how many items are returned for that given uh, for that given facet. So there's a couple. Um, a couple hooks you'll need to use uh, to make this happen, and I'll post I'll post some links to sort of some of the uh, resources uh, that reference this stuff because I'm going to go through it pretty quickly right now, uh, but I just kind of want to introduce the concept. Uh, anyway, there's this hook Apache Solar Facets, um, and basically all you're doing here is defining uh, the name of your facet, uh, the field that you're fa that you're faceting on, uh, and uh, giving it a uh, a callback for what actually gets displayed to the end user uh, when returning the values from that facet. Uh, I've got a little utility function here that just because you, ref you, you reference these facet keys a number of places, it's good to kind of put this in a, in a, a little function because you will use it again. Um, little utility function called Apache Solar Index Key. This is something provided by the Apache Solar module, but all it does is takes the field name uh, the cardinality and uh, what type of data is storing, and it'll combine these into the Apache Solar formatted name, which in this case is that IS designer. Okay, so that's the IS because you're looking at not multiple, so it's single. So right. It's an integer and then designer. Right, and so I could I, I could have actually just written in IS designer. It's just this way, you know, if it ever changes, Solar is kind of managing that instead of me. Um, so anyway, so I basically, I, I tell Solar, hey, I've got these facets. Um, and then once that happens, Solar realizes that, that I can facet based on this. So now all I need to do is give myself a UI element to actually interact with the facets. So at this point, if I, if I run it now, Solar's already optimized to, to segment based on designer. But in Drupal, I don't have any way to say, hey, Solar, give me you know, designer X. Give me designer Y. So the next step of this is to create blocks uh, so <clears throat> solar is aware of them and the Apache solar module is basically avail, uh, aware of them you can sort of say hey get me the list of facets that I have enabled for my given module uh, for this given module and you're basically just iterating through yeah. 
yeah, not not really doing anything special here except letting letting solar know or letting the block system know that you're going to have uh, a block available for however many facets that you've defined in your module. Um, in view, so view for block, obviously you're saying, hey, what data is going into this block? Um, so this block is only going to be relevant uh, if Apache Solar has searched, because if it hasn't searched, then you have no idea how many uh, nodes for any given facet are returned. So, um, so basically all we're doing here is it, it effectively packaging up the results from Apache Solar um, and yeah, that's sorry. This <laughs> this translates really tough to a uh, a talk and more and more better to a document that you guys can so reference. This looks like you're creating the display functions to render whatever is important that you stored in that field. Uh, this is this is rendering. Um, it basically Solar says, okay, when I run a query, it's going to tell me how many results I have for each of those uh, each of the values within the facet. And so what I'm saying is, okay, great. I know that uh, you know these ten designers have results back. I'm going to render that list of those designers. And then it's got the count on the side. Yeah, and then it's got the count on the side. Um, so there's a there's a. So yeah, there's basically utility functions that will. <clears throat> So this would be the callback that would run on each of the lines to say, hey, this is what you actually display for the facet value in this list. So here, uh, this will ultimately be cached. But right now, I'm just saying, OK, great. The facet is storing that integer of the designer, ne the designer node ID. Uh, and this callback is going to execute on each one of those and say, OK, great, give me the title instead of the number so that the end user can look at this and actually see uh, legible title instead of just a number for the designer name. Is that more performant or, or did you choose the number because that would no reference return? Uh, it's because what, yeah, it's like I, and, and actually looking at this, I probably should have done it the other way because what happens is when you actually uh, filter based on, or when you, when you do a faceted search or filter based on a designer, the right now it's the number. So it wouldn't be it wouldn't be difficult to switch this up so that at the index stage I actually store the designer name. Um, I think technically it would be more, it, it does perform better this way, but it means that the URL is a little less readable, so it's kind of a, a trade off. Um, but basically, yeah, you've got a callback that happens for each value that the facet returns, and then you've got basically this wrapper facet or this uh, wrapper function that will execute on all of them uh, and sort of give the uh, the larger formatting and basically all I'm doing here is iterating through uh, for the given solar response um, if there actually are any nodes returned then let's set up these values and this stuff is this is basically just setting up this uh, setting up this array in the format that the Apache Solar module wants it and will ultimately render the facets out through. Um, so all I'm doing is just creating a creating an array that is, you know, it's, it's basically just like any kind of Drupal form array. When you use that hook facets uh, mm -hmm. to, to tell Solar that you have the facet that you set up now, mm -hmm. is that, will that be available to you in the administrative interface? You see that facet there? Yes, the second the second that uh, that you create this hand, you know hook Apache Solar facets, uh, you will see. And again, you, facets and filters are kind of used interchangeably as a term. Technically, they are facets, but it does refer to them as as filters. So yes, yeah, so the second you do that, save it and return it, you'll see um, you'll see uh, the uh, the facet that you created appear in this listing. So you can see out of the box, Solar already creates um, things for all of your CCK fields. Um, and I forget exactly what I called my designer field. Yeah, here we go. So my handbag of search module provides these, uh, these filters. So once you enable that, um, yeah, then, then so you, you, def you, 
you say that your module provides it in hook Apache Solar Facets. You enable it here, and that means when the index is actually created, Apache Solar will actually do something with it. And then in the blocks, you provide the block that will actually provide a UI element for the user to interact with and filter down based on the facets. So, uh, I'll... Um, I wanted to uh, return some image data mm -hmm. associated with uh, search results. Mm -hmm. And um, I was wondering if it like, would make sense to try and store some of that binary data in the index, store a reference to an image cache file, like, uh, well, what you can do, um, and I actually haven't done it well in this, uh, here you go. So, everything that I've added so far, everything that you add in, uh, in um, that hook update index, um, let's see, okay, here we go. So, Solar supports something called dynamic fields, and uh, basically what you can do is you can define uh, prefixes or suffixes, however you want to name it. Um, so that any field that gets added to a document that Solar indexes um, gets processed based uh, kind of on that wildcard. So out of box with the Apache Solar module, they give you this schema.xml file that you you know you feed into Apache Solar and say, hey, great, this is this is how my my uh, index is getting built. Um, you can see that they've set up all of these uh, these prefixes for the different cardinalities and the different content types. So I've got a dynamic field. The name is is underscore star, so that means I'm going to match any field that gets passed into Apache is, is, uh, that, ha that starts with is underscore is going to get matched against this dynamic field type. Um, it's expecting an integer, it's indexed, it is stored, um, and in this case it's an integer single, so it's not multi-valued. What you can do for stuff like that that you're never going to index on, um, like image data, that kind of thing, um, you could create your own dynamic field. Uh, and you could, you could create something that is not indexed because you're gaining no valuable data in solar by indexing it, but you can store it in solar so that when you return that, that data from solar, that, uh, that content will be payloaded onto it. But what you're doing in this schema.xml is just telling solar what happens if I get something that's called, you know, Oliver's awesome file, this is what to do with it. But for that actually to get added, you'd need to go into your hook update index and actually manually load something into Oliver's awesome file field. Make sense? So so yeah, so all of these all these prefixes and you know this is this is just the uh, schema.xml that comes in the uh, with the Apache Solar module. You can reference this, and if you want to sort of do your own overloading and add your own extra data to uh, to get stored in solar, you can kind of base it on this and just modify the schema.xml file, load it into your solar instance, and uh, and you're good to go. Um, and where all this stuff gets referenced is okay, great. So I've I've done a search, I've returned some results. Um, now now let me actually look at what's in it. Uh, let me. Let me look at what's actually returned by a solar search. So just like any other theming in Drupal, you can do a pre-process function on your search result. And there you can see the fields that were added to your given search result. And I've got you know a bunch of logic here, but basically, so you can see that for each search result, any field that I've added to the index for that given node is accessible to me in the theming layer. Um, so this is where you parse together your markup here on the results return. Right. Well, this this is like your your hook preprocess. So then you can you know toss this out to a template file or or do whatever. But yeah, this is the the preprocessing preprocessing that would happen <coughs> before you render. Uh, I thought, but but. Then, if, if this preprocess function is running, are you then hitting Drupal to render the results, or how does that page operate? Yes, you hit you hit Drupal to render the results, but you're not hitting the Drupal database. So I'm not doing any node loads. I'm not and I'm not referencing the Drupal database at that point. I'm just doing presentation layer transformations on the content returned by Solar. Okay. Um. So yeah. So 
you know, some, some rough examples of the kinds of things. I mean, you've already seen sort of the designer and how I'm uh, sort of collating different fields from multiple content types into a single facet. Uh, something else that I do uh, is maybe do some custom groupings. Like, for example, each of these actually has a specific numerical price, but it's not useful for me to try and index and say, okay, give me everything that's $320. Give me everything that's $330. Um, so I can kind of create these brackets. This is the another type of sort of custom business logic that I could put in, create a custom facet for, and then, uh, you know, give my customers the ability to search on sort of a more useful basis. So it has a custom, it has a, a custom field you created, then told it about the facet. Mm-hmm. The field is where you put that logic to say, if it fell within this range, put it in this bucket. So, yeah, so I actually, um, let's do that one. So, it's yeah, it's not, a, it's not a template. Uh, update index. So, yeah, for example, for, for pricing, oh, that's the themed version. Here we go. So yeah, so I figure out the price and I add this field, um, and then yes, I, I let so, so the price, module know. Price is not a, do, a float or a dollar amount. It's an actual. It's it's a bucket. Like it could be zero to nine, and you're giving it a score. Mm -hmm. That's what you're doing in your logic. No, in this I'm actually I actually pass in the specific I I pass in the specific price. I just determine the actual price as a float. Pass it in. Um, and then it's at the other end that I can actually um, segment out into these buckets. So that's that's on the solar display side when you're creating that block. That's correct. Yes. Uh, let's okay, see. So you're not putting it into solar that way. No, I'm not. Uh, am I? Hang on. You're not calculating. You're basically not creating a calculated range that that you assign that price to. Right. It's coming back out the other way. So yeah. you really the are storing the price. Because that way I can, if I do a sort based on that price point field, I actually can get right. real sorts uh, instead of, right. yes. Right. So I'm, I'm actually indexing the price as a float, and then uh, on the output is basically when I, let's see. Yeah, so this is, I've got a, I've got a function that actually just handles the bracketing here, breaks them down into the groupings. Um, and then when I list, I basically just iterate through, and if it falls into that price point, then I'm dumping that document into that bucket for the count. What's calling that function? Uh, this function is getting called uh, by the hook block with operation equals view, um, because that's the, at the that's actually the display time logic that's happening um, based on the results from Solar. Cool. Um, so yeah, I mean that's a uh, basic introduction to faceting, filtering, um, search uh, with solar. Um, I don't know, it might be better if you guys have questions, I can kind of drill down in a little bit more, we can call it good for now and maybe make this a little bit more formal and give you a little bit more thought out int uh, information. Does anyone have any questions? Uh, I don't know. Um, I I think you. I mean, you run it. You run it in a in a Java application server. So I don't know if you can run compile. Do you know? Well, I, I don't know about GCK, but there's um, but Solar and Lucene are are you know, extremely similar, and, and there's actually ports of both Solar and Lucene on the platform. So there's pure C implementations. Uh, but yeah, Solar runs it. Uh, right. Like there's even a PHP implementation. Yeah, interesting. Oh, the Lucene API. It's, yeah. it's very, it's very, uh, it's very uh, alluring uh, because it's it's a drop-in module that you can just use, but it's not very performant. It's not. It's what you would use if you can't use Solar and you must use Solar and you don't have a lot of traffic. Yeah, it's. it's, <laughs> it's a weird yeah, as you said, it's a weird combination. <laughs> it's, it's still way faster than the old uh, Bastion search module. Mm -hmm. That. Yeah, it was horrifying. Horrifying, yeah. Sorry, Doug. We know you're listening. We, we love you. Yeah, it was awesome.
but <laughs> but I was, I was I was just gonna point out one thing though um, back to the the, the past particularly the designer mm-hmm. um, and the kind of conversation about using its node ID versus mm-hmm. the design label. You know, it's a good example where if you're just doing facets, you know, you can focus on just kind of what's displayed. Mm-hmm. For instance, and it kind of doesn't matter in the way, but if you're doing also full text search, mm-hmm. you might want to actually include the designer name and right. the index, right? And same thing with the, the price range. If, you know, if you're sorting on those values, then you're actually going to want the, uh, the dollar value. If not, you could just have it as a as calculator. Thing. Right. The full text search is also phenomenally fast. Right. Well, see, this I figured the, I. I believe the implementation of the node reference, the CCK node reference that automatically gets indexed by Solar. I believe it already tosses a, uh, the designer name in. Uh, oops, I'll probably check that real quick. Because I'm kind of curious about that now. This is just the uh, the back end to solar. Um, let's see. And so that's an integer. No, so no, I guess it's not. Um, so yeah, that wouldn't be a bad idea to toss it in as text. Cool. Anybody else? Uh, okay. Thanks.